Right, a fair bit of setup involved in today's uh, little look at an amplifier. Uh, this is um, the Sweet 16, and uh, uh, those of you that uh, don't know this amplifier, it's an oldie but a goodie. This is the DX1600X, and um, uh, we're just having a bit of a look through at um, uh, some issues that this one's got. Uh, we've had to set it up, <laughs> obviously, with a um, uh, QMAX um, 120 amp supply, and uh, I'm just using as a driver at, uh, at an old TS440, and uh, we've got monitors, uh, metering monitors uh, going from uh, the input, uh, we're reg sorry, registering the input over here, then registering the output over here. So today's problem is an interesting one. Um, this um, uh, amplifier essentially is working, but it's got a, a bit of an impedance issue from the transmitter through to the um, through to the amplifier. And you'll find this sometimes that um, uh, you will actually be getting output, but I can see straight away one of the things that immediately sticks out at me, is, uh, sticks out to me, <laughs> um, is um, our drive power. Now I'm just going to come off SWR and show you that. Um, into a, a, a dummy load direct, the radio is doing 100 watts drive. And then we go there. And when we go into SWR, into a dummy load, we're two to one. And um, uh, we were getting reports that this was anything up to three to one uh, as a, a mismatch. Um, and uh, but just to give you an idea of the output of these amplifiers, we're on the um, what are we on the 2000 watt scale? I hope, yes, we are. <laughs> That's right, have a look then. Uh, so about uh, 600 odd watts of carrier there, um, coming off this um, solid state amplifier. Um, so Partly this video is to show you what a Sweet 16 is, because a lot of you haven't seen one before. Um, I don't know whether we'll end up doing a part two or whether I'll just um, have a, a quick removal of the covers and, and work from there. Um, they're, look, they're a great old amplifier, but they're not without their problems. They can have you know, their various issues, and um, the old Texas Star equipment um, it does date back quite a way. But very collectible, certainly, you know... Um, Let's just go to sideband. Hang on, I'll just um, change over there. And we'll go to peak power there. Uh, let's just have a little look at one, two, three, four, five. Hello. So, about 700 watts peak, you know, sort of that I'm getting out of that at the moment. You'll hear lots of classic reports of these putting out 2000 watts and lots of things like that. Um, and, um, uh, there is a difference between class A, B, and uh, class C. Um, uh, I'm just trying to remember what that is. Actually, this might be easier to show you. So about 500 watts in class A, B. Um, when you go to class C, obviously you're broadening out a little bit and getting a little bit more power. So, um, and um, uh, right there is just showing you the. Um, I'm thinking it's the bias voltage. I remember now the BV. <laughs> so someone can make a note on the um, on the channel. Um, they did have a receive amp as well on them, which was uh, quite good. And um, the other significant feature, the the dial a watt <laughs> was always a great idea. Um, but you do have a control here, which you can uh, cut that power back. So if we go down to low, uh, low one two. Yeah, we're about you know just under 400 watts, which is you know probably nice if you. Uh, running on um, 10 meters, you, you're just legal, um, and obviously peaking up to about 700 watts um, um, solid state. Uh, so it's just a flick of the um, the knob here, basically to to adjust your power. The um, um, uh, drive input uh, generally, you know, 100 watts into these is about the max you want to put into them. Uh, you don't really want to go much over that. 
uh, but they, they do seem to percolate uh, reasonably well at that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where we go from here because I may have to do a bit of a pull down on this and uh, we're going to have to make a bit of bench space to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, something's not right on the impedance. It's not as bad as what was being told to me, but it's, it's not right either. So there is something going on and there is a bit of a mysterious smell coming from it at times. Um, uh, so we want to look into that and just see what's going on there. But um, I might just sort of let this video keep going for a little bit, just um, just to show you the internals of it. Um, I, I may have to do a part two if we, you know, get down to sort of what we end up doing with it. Um, it. It actually just takes a fair bit of time just to get it all set up with all your ins and outs, and you've got all sensors and bits and pieces set up. To um, uh, we're using like a little um, two kilowatt sensor there for the power star. And then obviously the CPI is just a direct uh, link in. But even that I had to go find a battery for. <laughs> I wanted to use a CPI meter today, um, uh, purely and simply because we haven't really done much display of the CPI meters. Uh, the other one, by the way, is a PowerStar PM2000 AM. Um, with it has a, they're great for the mobile because you can just put it um, anywhere. And then of course your little pickup sensor head, um, you can put um, somewhere under the seat, etc., etc. Uh, it makes it a lot more convenient. All right. Well, let me just um, pull some screws. Let's have a bit of a look. Okay, so as you can see, the breakdown of the Sui 16 is a little bit of a nightmare. Um, just, uh, But once you've got it, you need a bit of space just to make a bit of room. If you're going to be working on a Sui 16, uh, they can be uh, interesting to say the least. Um, so just a breakdown of the um, uh, the, the Sui 16 as far as what what is involved um, in as much as um, uh, you've got a whole lot of um, basically what I call um, probably over a hundred but a whole lot of hundred watt boards um, but it's more than that um, you'll, you'll certainly get more than that out of the 2SC 2879s um, and and this is where the problem can be it's a bit of a balancing act sometimes to to make all these boards actually work together and of course you only need one of these boards to start giving you a problem um, with uh, any of these resistors uh, certainly there's a few areas here um, that if one goes faulty it's going to start impacting the impedance um, also you to be really cautious about some of these fellas here um, there's a lot of measurements that have got to be taken before we can sort of ascertain what's going on and um, and as you can see they they sort of do all this switching over here um, and um, uh, this little control here which was your variable output that actually talks over to this fella here and then they're actually just uh, dropping that with some resistors there um, obviously some switching circuit in there look you know it, it's a reasonably basic sort of uh, design but you got to remember when these were built it, it, this um, uh, and here's the other problem the 2SC2879s, and I suppose this is just a warning to anybody that owns a Sweet 16 or is, you know, contemplating buying one. Um, they're as rare as rare now. Um, um, they really are becoming as rare as rocking horse crap. And it really is definitely um, a consideration. And um, I suppose the argument would be that, you know, you could rebias and, and set up something else in here. But, I mean, these days, why would you? Uh, with, you know, some of the FETs that are available... Um, you know, there's there's really a lot cheaper solutions to um, to get this sort of power. I mean, I'm talking one device solutions that can get this sort of power. So you know, certainly bear that in mind when you you know thinking about. Um, I mean, if you're into collecting older stuff like I am, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, absolutely. But you know, you do stand the risk that um, um, it'll be an extremely expensive repair if you ever need to replace these two uh, C twenty eight seventy nines if you can get them. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, as far as uh, ventilation and, and how they cool it and what they did here, uh, yeah, pretty good, not too bad at all, actually. And once again, for the date of, of this unit, uh, you know, I, I really wish I could give you a date. Um, uh, you know, I uh, just I, th I think they were 90s, but I oh, they could even be older, could be 80s, um, might be 80s actually. So, once again, feel free to comment on the um, comment section of the YouTube channel if um, you know a bit more about the uh, the dates and etc but um, overall this is not looking too bad this there's, there's I mean the fact that it was getting reasonable power out you know told us straight away that um, you know we're probably not going to see a major burn up in here but something smells in here um, normally I say that you know 
something smells fishy but something smells smoky in here and I'm looking through trying to just see what the heck uh, is causing that but what we'll do is we'll power it up while it's uh, in pieces and um, we'll start looking for smoke and see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm probably not going to continue on with this video for now um, only that um, uh, you know you've got a, a reasonable, reasonably good idea what the old Swix 16 is now and uh, as I said a lot of you sort of mentioned them to me uh, over the years and I, I just haven't had one sitting around the place to uh, to show you so I thought it was a good opportunity just to um, uh, show you one. Um, hopefully there won't be too much wrong with this one but uh, we'll see. Um, we need to really isolate some of these stages and just check what's going on, take some readings and and, uh, uh, and this is another thing too, you can spend a lot of time on these things, they really can be painful so um, trying to you know find out exactly what's causing uh, that impedance problem um, you know uh, don't get me wrong it can be something as simple as a resistor um, it can be a coil it can be a cap that's giving you trouble something really really you know um, easy that smell that I'm smelling in there um, hopefully you know, gives us a bit of a bit of a lead as to um, what's going on uh, it could even be in their switching system too um, you know so we'll, we'll have a look at that uh, sometimes uh, there can be some strange little funnies that happen with uh, relays and bits. All right, anyway, uh, that's just a, a very quick look at the um, the Sweet 16, and uh, I might just um, just try something. Okay, so we've just got it all powered up. Um, effectively, this is working. <laughs> it's um, it's actually look. Um, we're going to have to try and find out what this SWR problem is. Really weird one. Um, we know we're in a one-to-one -one dummy load, so um, and I've got a feeling it's on the input. Um, just looking at that. Anyway, we'll go searching and see what's going on. And uh, uh, you never know, we might come back with a report back, but um, um, we'll see how we go for time. But certainly, that's the Sweet 16 DX1600X. You won't see too many of these in Australia. Well, the truth is I know we're two are straight away. All right, fair enough. You might see two of them. In <laughs> anyway, all good. Um, by the way, thanks very much for the emails um, and messages. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Just um, unfortunately, uh, I just get an hour or two here and there that I can get on the bench. Um, unfortunately, you know, health is an issue. I, I, I appreciate all the, um, uh, the, the comments and certainly the uh, support. And we will get there. It's just going to take uh, time and doctors and stuff and drugs and lots of things but anyway we're working on it uh, but not giving up so that's the main thing all right look thanks guys um, we'll um, certainly uh, try and uh, bring a bit more to the channel very very soon cheers all vk3 Charlie mike jdw229 vk3 cm uh, is uh, is my victorian call and of course someone would know me as vk5 bm from my south australian days if I can ever get back there, still not allowed to get across to South Australia, from what I understand. Unreal, this COVID stuff. But anyway, I want to see my mum. Anyway, hopefully soon. All right, guys, all the best. Please subscribe, etc. Cheers.